Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, leaving a like, leaving a comment or subscribing, all of these things do help the channel. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed, because there's always a lot of stuff happening in the cryptocurrency space. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. The Lebanese government is reportedly planning to devalue their local currency by up to 93% in a desperate bid to receive funding from the International Monetary Fund. As part of the plan, a major portion of foreign currency deposits in the banking system will be converted into local currency at different exchange rates. In a bid to tackle its now four, five-plus-year financial crisis, the Lebanese government is reportedly pursuing a plan that will see the country's local currency being devalued by 93%. In addition, the government plans to convert a significant portion of foreign currency deposits in the banking system into the Lebanese pound. According to a Reuters report, the Lebanese government hopes pursuing this financial plan will enable the country to secure a bailout from the International Monetary Fund. This bailout is seen as Lebanon's only path out of a long-running financial crisis. This is probably one of the worst things that you're going to hear about at least over the course of this week. This has been continual news that we've had more or less, I want to say, every couple of months within the cryptocurrency space. Sometimes something absolutely horrendous can be happening, but it doesn't make headlines anymore because something new and even terribler is also now taking place in the space. The idea of having to devalue your own currency just to get a bailout is absolutely incredibly ridiculously horrible, especially because when you get news like this, you're kind of faced with the idea of, well, this is what the government is doing, not realizing that there are millions of people who are going to be affected by this. We had news about Lebanon, I believe the last time, potentially early 2020 or maybe the end of 2019, when they were really heavily in the news. And the news back then was, Allegedly, or so we were going over in the news, is that people in the country uh, were locked out of their bank accounts. And if they did have access to their bank accounts, which the government uh, locked and stopped everything, I think you were only able to take out the equivalent of $100 over the course of an entire month. I told you this story before. I have a friend. We were discussing because she has family in Lebanon and she was telling me. Now, one of her uncle's grandfathers, I don't remember the significance of the older man, uh, but they had moved to Lebanon years ago, had saved up all this money, started a, a very, you know, a great business, had saved up millions of, the equivalent of millions of dollars in their bank account, uh, went to their bank one day and found out that they could not take any of their money out because it was no longer their money. It now belonged to the bank slash the government. So uh, this is just another long-term... I don't even know how to properly put it into words. A lot of times we get a major focus on what's happening in the United States with the U.S. dollar. And even that, as we've also gone over a couple of days ago, we just received news that the current inflation rate and the consumer index pricing is over 7%. We've had news about how much uh, housing has gone up, uh, the amount of rent, the amount of food and meat and yada, yada, yada. And these things are really, really bad for people actually living in the country. They go through this every single day. And then you put it into a further perspective that this is also happening in multiple other countries around the world, but like in a 9x of from what's happening in America. Imagine not having any access to any of your money that you saved your entire life and you were told to put that money away because it's the safest way to do it. You're told by the government and the bank. Leave your money with us, you have an insurance, you have a so-and-so, and then you receive nothing. Imagine having $5 million in the bank, and the most you can take out is $100 per month. And then you have the government talking about they want to devalue their currency so that they can get a bailout from the International Monetary Fund, which I promise you is not going to sprinkle onto their citizens, as opposed to simply just having a proper economic policy that they should have been following for the last 20 to 30 years to actually help out their citizens. Really weird times that we're living in. Uh, this was not one of the most popular news stories of the day. And I thought that was the weirdest thing in the entire world. Normally, uh, no, you know, e e even more so, just to be completely honest, I think one of the weirdest parts of the cryptocurrency space is this like worshipping 
of people simply because they are rich. I've gone over this before. You've heard me definitely talk about it. But this is one of the things that I, when I discuss why Bitcoin is undervalued, because we've also had news for a number of years that people in Lebanon, whatever money they could take away or move away, they were putting into the cryptocurrency space as well as Bitcoin has been seen as and should be seen as, at least at the moment, uh, the kind of the ray of hope of getting out of the old financial system. So when we have news that not only is the US dollar completely collapsing around us, but in Lebanon, in Turkey, and about 15 other countries off the top of my head, that they're also all going down. But this news never makes headline news. It may be around in one or two different websites. But then after that, it's anything that Elon Musk says or any of the other uh, rich figures in the cryptocurrency space. It's very, very odd. I think people have completely lost sight of what crypto is actually for. I mentioned before, altcoins are a complete distraction. I'm sorry to tell you the truth, but it's it's just completely exactly what's going on because they're meant to kind of make sure that you don't pay attention to the other world events that are going on. Has anyone else thought it's weird that as all this stuff is going on, every time that we get news as to what the whales are buying, it's always the exact same cryptocurrency. Every time a major company or financial institution or one of the big four accounting firms or any other major bank is getting into the cryptocurrency space, they're all focused on one coin as the rest of the world completely collapses around everyone else. No one else thought that was kind of weird. Uh, so yeah, uh, I had to find this news on other websites because I saw the news and sometimes you see stuff within the cryptocurrency space. I go over news obviously every single day, but sometimes I see the news and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. But then I have to like make sure that I'm checking my sources, if you will, because sometimes it just seems a little bit too ridiculous to actually be true. No, this is this is entirely true. Uh, no one's reporting all this within the cryptocurrency space. It's all about uh, immediate prices and where this price prediction say this is going, but not the fact that once again, <laughs> a devaluation of 93% means their currency is completely done. They, they, there's nothing that they can actually do, even with a recourse of a bailout. What, what they're going to have to probably end up doing is actually adopt another nation's currency and or scrap their entire currency to try and print another new currency, which is only going to be under the same economic policies. But of course, that won't also make it into the cryptocurrency space news because no one actually cares. Anyway, yeah. So that's the uh, actual currency crisis news. Uh, we get some of this. Every day, every other day, depending on where you look in the in, in the news space. But no one within the cryptocurrency space cares. And even weirder, once again, uh, don't forget the news that we had uh, that U.S. inflation uh, went up. Was it 6 7%? We had this news three days ago. Uh, and then Bitcoin's price also fell on that same exact day. So anyway, that's the Lebanon news. I hope you're paying attention. Question mark. All righty. Let's move on. Also in the news, Coinbase has removed the how to buy instructions from its website for at least three crypto tokens. The tokens in question have been the subject of a rug pool warnings that investors may lose their money. Coinbase said on Thursday that it is part of improving safeguards, a rug pull. In crypto parlay uh, occurs when a crypto or virtual asset project developers influence a token's apparent worth and then abandon the project taking investors' funds. A spokesperson for Coinbase informed that the links were removed from the exchange after it was bought to the notice of the exchange by Reuters. The spokesperson further added that an upgrade in safeguards on its auto-created web pages is being created as well. Coinbase and many other, I, I didn't even know what to actually say about this. The word rug pool, of course, I had it in my vocabulary, but it wasn't that prevalent until about a good year or so ago. I've had a number of people who have got into the cryptocurrency space, been into the cryptocurrency space for a while, uh, kind of use this lingo as if they're saying, I'm going to go drink some water. Uh, I've known a number of people who have told me that they've gotten into multiple cryptocurrency projects, but there were rug pools. It's okay. It happens from time to time. And very nonchalantly telling me that they've lost high four figures, high five figures, uh, because they put their money into something. It seemed a bit fishy. It got rug pulled, but it's okay. I'll just move on to the next coin. 
I, I don't say these things because I like the sound of my voice. I think the sound of my voice, I actually can't stand it like most other people. When you are getting into the cryptocurrency space, please, I understand that it's very exciting, the idea of being able to make a very quick buck and you are like, yeah, I can't wait to make all this money. Girls, fame, fortune, the yacht and all that other stuff. Just use logic. Just use, uh, not even, co- I mean, common sense would also be very, very nice. I think the entire cryptocurrency space needs a reset. Um, I don't know. That can never, of course, happen because you can't hit a red button and start everything all over again. But so many people are in the space just for a very quick, fast dollar. They don't understand the significance of the U.S. dollar collapsing. Other currencies asking the International Monetary Fund for bailouts or to allow them to have Bitcoin bonds. Where all this Bitcoin is moving to, why we keep seeing that the biggest Bitcoin addresses on the planet continue to rise, and all these other mega investors aren't collecting any of these other smaller coins that for some reason the newest people in the market continue to buy even though they know there's a gigantic risk of losing all their money, uh, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You can't have the attitude, it's okay, I'll put my money into 10 different things. If five of them are rug pool, well, at least I didn't get scammed out of the other ones. Not really sure what's happening, so I think Coinbase also needs to realistically do some type of hyper due diligence instead of trying to add every single coin onto their platform at the exact same time. I don't have news about it here, no. Uh, I think there's a recent, uh, or supposed to be, it's gone now, uh, BBC documentary that was going to air relatively soon about someone who told the BBC and many other publications that uh, allegedly... Uh, With only $50 to his name, he decided to invest it in the cryptocurrency space and made $8 million. That's a pretty cool story. You know, 50, like $50 is, you know, it's it's a lot, but it's not really a lot in the long term to make $8 million. And then guess what? It was allegedly all a lie. This person made this up and they were only told by another publication who was like, hey, we've been looking into that guy And he's been pulling a lot of rugs, and that's how he actually made all of his money. So, um, if you can, you know, if you care about your actual money that you've been working hard to earn, stop putting it into ridiculous projects. I know no one's going to hear me. And and, 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 I'll bring that back. At least three people watching this right now are actually going to hear me and are going to do it. I know some of you have maybe clicked away, have rolled your eyes in anything that I'm actually saying I find it so weird. It's kind of the same exact thing with like uh, retiring or like retiring early or putting money away. You would not believe, you you actually wouldn't, the amount of people I know in their mid-20s, late 20s, early 30s, who I tell, hey, it's time to start putting some money away. Because at some point, when your bones are old and brittle, you are going to want to settle down and retire. 99% of them, I have a friend who literally rolls her eyes, turns to the side, and she takes out a book. It happens every single time. Why people don't have this um, sense of urgency when it comes to the fact that if you're lucky, we're all going to get older, a lot older, and you're not going to want to work forever. So put money away for the future. Learn how to save, learn how to invest. But this, for some reason, doesn't connect in the minds of tons of other people. Have you ever, uh, and I know I've been saying this quite often, but please do it. Try and watch a documentary on the uh, retirement crisis, which is also a thing. On the social security crisis, which is also uh, going to run out of money, I think around 2040, there's going to be no more retirement money or like actual pension money in a number of different countries. Look it up. But also, I saw something recently. It was in German, for those of you who can speak German. I forgot the actual name of the documentary. Uh, And it was this woman explaining. She was in her 60s, late 60s. And she was like, I'm supposed to be a year away from retirement. And they were like, how much money do you have? She's like, nothing. I have not a dollar. I never saved. I never put anything away. My friends told me years ago that I should do it. But I was like, that's the government's problem. When I get old enough, the government's going to have all the money for me. And I will not have to worry. So she is going to be getting a pension, but it's roughly the equivalent of around $325 per month. Uh, That's it. No other money. Nothing. So this kind of ties into the exact same thing. I I think people here 
that you have to do due diligence when investing in the cryptocurrency space. Make sure you know where your money is going. But people don't care. I've I've been trying for years and years and years to try and get people to understand. Uh, but I see the comment section. I see people talking. I see people on uh, Twitter and on Reddit and many other places, either discussing my channel or many other channels and, the talk and talking about the coins that they're actually into. It's a real, real shame. Anyway, so... Uh, that's the Coinbase news. Try, if you can, to make sure that you are investing in things that have a likelier chance of surviving and not being rug pulled uh, than many of these other things that also keep getting added onto major cryptocurrency platforms as well. That's the Coinbase news. And without further ado, let's move on. Next up. California-based chain Everbowl has announced that it is moving its business operations to a Bitcoin standard in which it will be converting its cash reserves into Bitcoin. According to an announcement, the California-based superfood chain published Everbowl has conducted research and spoke with advisors about its available options to move their treasury into Bitcoin and how to run the company using a Bitcoin standard. Jeff Fenster, founder and CEO of Everbowl, was quoted as saying, we've conducted, concluded, that running the business exclusively on cash isn't the most advantageous nor the safest method of running a business in 2022 and beyond. This is around the, I want to say the 10th, I think that we've been publicly told uh, that is a, a large mega company, if you will, who has begun moving their um, cash reserves into Bitcoin. When this news takes place, once again, no one usually pays attention. I know that there are a few of you. I'm not grouping you all into the exact same thing. I know some of you do have brains. I, I got that part. Uh, but doesn't it seem a little funny that the only people who are paying attention are the large corporations, the hedge funds, the banks, the mega institutions who are moving their money out of the world reserve currency into Bitcoin? Over and over, constantly, all the time. This, I mean, the only news that really became popular was the, I mean, hyper popular was the Tesla news because everyone loves Elon Musk and everything that he does. So yeah, um, this is also quite significant news because once again, these are, here's the actual press release. These are the actual companies who come out and say that they're doing this openly while many other uh, companies simply do not. They do it in the background. We've also had news, remember, even a year or two ago, uh, there were a lot of like mom and pop shops who also came out to announce, hey, we have an extra half a million dollars. We're going to put, put in all that money into Bitcoin every single month if we possibly can. Uh, understand the trends, understand the, not even the lingo, because I'm speaking in proper plain English. So just really understand where this is all going, the coin that is constantly in the news all the time. Um, but yeah, so this is another, I've never, I've never even heard of Everbowl. I also don't live in California, so I guess that's a, a pretty big uh, thing right there. If you know Everbowl, is it good? Do they have good stuff? Is it like the other organic store where like a loaf of bread is like $22? Anyway, that's the other gigantic chain store moving into a Bitcoin standard. Uh, don't forget that they are not the only ones doing so. Tons of banks and institutions are also moving their cash reserves, US dollars into Bitcoin as well. And, you know, Bitcoin's being integrated into every single thing on the planet, but I'm pretty sure it's nothing. You know, just don't even pay attention. Anyway. That's the Everbowl news. All right. Let's move on. Also in the news, PayPal has allegedly assembled a team of industry experts to act as advisors on crypto, blockchain, and digital currencies. In a Tuesday announcement, PayPal said the addition of six members to its blockchain, crypto, and digital currencies advisory council would help to support its future and f current and future projects, as well as its goal of creating a more inclusive digital financial ecosystem. And there's like a, a wall of names right there. They said, we believe it is crucial to engage with the world's best leaders to better understand the industry's most compelling opportunities and complex 
challenges. It looks Coinbase is a Coinbase. PayPal is gearing up for something quite large. I can feel it. I, it's just something in my bones. Uh, it's not even the the creation of this advisory council. This sounds more like they're going to start actually talking to a number of world leaders uh, to let them know exactly what PayPal is going to be doing. And they they want to, of course, act as the the gatekeeper. Uh, but PayPal is actually, I assume, one of the more intelligent companies in the uh, money transmitting space who kind of realized early on uh, that Bitcoin is going to be it. People want access to Bitcoin and therefore they should be the people who actually give access to Bitcoin uh, themselves. So uh, once again, not the most popular news, but I think this is leading up to something absolutely gigantic, especially when we had news, don't forget, about two years ago, uh, that on a daily basis, it's uh, PayPal, MicroStrategy, and third company, can't remember their names, uh, they were buying up all the Bitcoin every single day that was actually being created. Once again, that's 900 Bitcoin per day. And keeping in mind, realistically, that everyone who is actually uh, mining or minting Bitcoin is not probably even selling right now. So they're buying a lot on over-the-counter markets as well. So I wholeheartedly expect PayPal is going to be one of the richest companies on this planet in about a good 10 years, especially as they are once again one of the very few payment options. I mean, you also got Visa and stuff like that who are actually announcing these things. But yeah, let's see exactly how that turns out for them because I'm pretty sure they're working on something gigantic. I think the worst thing would be, let, let's be honest, is if PayPal made their own metaverse. I'd be completely against that because that just sounds completely ridiculous. Anyway, that's the PayPal news. And yeah, let's move on. And to finish things off, the Treasury Department of Puerto Rico has published a working document that amends the current sales and usage tax to include NFT sales. While this proposal has yet to be approved, experts believe the inclusion of NFTs in this reform brings validation to the asset class, sure, but also that the application of the regulation presents challenges. Uh, the, the validation of the asset class does not, be, does not need to be done through taxation. I'm pretty sure the asset class can validate itself without having to try and make extra money on the side. The Department of the Treasury of Puerto Rico has its eyes on NFT sales. Can you imagine why? The organization released a newly a new proposed what? Newly proposed reform to the sales and usage tax that last month saw the concept of NFTs as a taxable asset class. I don't have to read anymore. So for those of you who do not know, a lot of very rich individuals have been moving to Puerto Rico over the last two or three years, three and a half years, as it became very well known that if you uh, are a U.S. citizen and can actually move there free of will, uh, if you use it as your uh, place of residence, you do not pay any taxes, I believe, when you sell your cryptocurrency assets. You can look it up. It's all over the place. I made a video on the other channel as well discussing places you can go where you legally don't have to pay uh, crypto tax. Uh, so... As the NFT market continues to expand, for those of you who are not in the NFT market, it has become, at least over the last year and a half, quite clear that uh, there is no real direct correlation to the NFT market and to the cryptocurrency market. So, as the cryptocurrency market over the last six months, more or less, was slumping, the NFT market continued to do just well consistently and is still doing quite well at this time. So, people are making huge amounts of money. Uh, usually hundreds of millions of dollars. You heard the, the news stories and it's all over Instagram and all these other places. So I understand why they would want to tax it because if you have all these people moving to your island then there's no real direct benefit from these people immediately moving there. Maybe they make a couple million dollars. Maybe they buy some property on your land. Maybe they don't. Uh, but for the sale of NFTs, I'm pretty sure they're going to start trying to tax that. Uh, no actual number on like, you know, no 15, 20, 25% on it. But I'm pretty sure uh, they definitely want their slice of the pie, which is totally, not that it's understandable, but you know, it's going to happen at some point. This is the main discussion that a lot of different countries are having right now as well. We're not going to ban it, but we definitely want a little piece of what you've got there. So there's also a lot of news about um, tons of people moving to uh, Portugal recently as well. For those of you who do not know, 
Uh, Portugal's tax laws, look it up. You are going to be pleasantly surprised and might even be looking for a plane ticket yourself. So yeah, that's the Puerto Rico NFT tax is probably going to happen news. And yeah, let's move on. Right. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all have, are having, might continue to have a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching. That was a very fast car. Uh, watching, listening, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.